course we will look into it. Yes, I'm aware that it's an election year. Keep a hold of your hat, Counselor. Now is not the time to lose your nerve. It would appear that someone has hocked a rose gold wedding ring, a matching engagement ring. Sound familiar? Deirdre Muller. Press the pawnbroker and see what you can find out. The address is 348 South Main Street. The Muller case goes before the grand jury next week, and the DA does not want any egg on his face. Then get out to the railroad depot on Santa Fe Avenue. We have another poor unfortunate found this morning beside a railroad line. Forty-year-old white woman. Right, Skipper. What's up, guys? Waddle Gaming here, and welcome back to more L.A. Noir. Another body, and Deirdre Muller's ring. The Emperor may soon have to come to terms with the fact that he's wearing no clothes. When exactly did you get that book of riddles shoved up your ass, Phelps? Is that what your old man paid college tuition for? Today we're starting our fifth case. We've only got one left to do after this. So, first off, we need to go out to the pawnbroker because apparently someone gave in the rings from that other address. So let's head out to there first, and then we'll head out to the uh, crime scene. You've got to admit, this is looking odd. Nah, anyone could pawn a ring. But if you take it along with all of the other indicators... Hold it. Hugo Muller was identified by the school's groundkeeper. He's our guy. Witnesses have fingered the wrong guy before. He ran, for God's sakes. And he always maintained he was set up. Wait, didn't we arrest the other guy out of that? Why did we arrest Hugo for? He wasn't the guy. Right, let's go see who hocked okay, these rings. Detectives Phelps and Galloway, LAPD. You have a rose gold wedding and engagement ring? David Bremner. Am I gonna get something for this pledge? I gave that bum money, now you guys are gonna leave me short. How much did you give him? 50 bucks. Try another number. 20? Try 10. Feel lucky you're getting it. I have the rings right here. What's this mark here? Maker's mark. Usually traceable. That one came from Hartfield's Jewelry down on Broadway. Thanks for the tip. That's also where we got Edgar Kalu. So that's nice to know. Does this mark mean anything? All mark. Gives you an idea of the quality. What have you got on the guy who brought these in? Goes by the name of Percy B. Shelley. Gave an address. 15 Poland Street, London, Tulare County. Can you give us a description of the man who pawned these rings? I'm not sure. Medium height, medium build, dark hair, I think. Sorry. He just had one of those forgettable faces. We'll be in touch, Mr. Bremner. Right, so that's a complete bust then. That's good to know. Now, we better get down to the railway yard. You drive. So, Rusty. You need to go over the case notes. Fine. Where are we headed? Get around and drive, you lazy bum. We have a problem. We could have the local troopers check out the Tulare County address. The address is bogus. The purpose having fun with us. The guy who's been sending the Dahlia letters is also the guy who pawned these rings. How do you figure that one? Percy Bysshe Shelley wrote the poem that came with the Dahlia letter. If the Dahlia letters are genuine, then the man who killed Elizabeth Short may have also killed Deirdre Muller. And how do we prove that, Phelps? Skipper ain't gonna like this one bit. We're gonna have to rely on this guy tripping up on his own vanity. You boys ready? Follow me. 
We should keep this development with the ring under our hat until we speak with the captain. We're all on the same team, Rusty. Chain of command, Phelps. The skipper will decide who needs to know. You got it? I get it, Rusty. I just don't like it. Hard, isn't it? Yeah. I look after all the rail depots. What have you got? The Negro, Nelson Gaines, called it in. I came down here to make sure him and the other guy, Jameson, stuck around. Jameson found the body? Something like that. Guy makes me sick. We'll talk to the coroner. Keep an eye on both of them. All right, then. So, we better go speak with the coroner. What have we got here? White female, approximately 40 years of age, lipstick smudges on the face, but no writing, at least nothing legible. A blunt force trauma to the temple, nose, and eye regions. Ligature marks point to the probable cause of death being strangulation. Any idea of the time of death? From her temperature, after midnight would be my guess. Okay, then. So, what have we got? Smell? Very good. There is the usual evacuation smell, but it appears she's been living rough for quite some time. Very strong smell of alcohol. Well, the autopsy will tell, but I would assume that she was inebriated. Okay, what else has she got? And another ring? Another missing ring. It certainly seems I've been swabbing a lot of bare fingers recently. Can you be more exact about the time of death? No later than 2 a.m. The state the body was in, a one or two hour window is the best I can do. Alright, so we've got a time of death now. And we've got some blood spatter on the carriage. Blood splatter on the carriage. She must have been struck while standing up. Alright, what else have we got? We've got a handbag. Trying to get her to come home. And it looks like we're missing the second half of that letter. Do we have a name at least? We could go over to the lot and see what they know about her. That's going to be difficult, Cole. Keystone Studio lot closed back in 41. Okay, so that's a bust. How about... Yeah, there's another bar. Maybe someone at Mensch's will remember her. Mensch's, bar, corner, 9th and main. And we should have this left. This is a chit for personal items, not booze. It's an angle worth investigating. Levine's Liquor. And I think we should be all done. What are you thinking, Ray? The city keeps tossing us dead bodies. We're just running to catch up. Okay, good talk. Well, that should be all the... Yeah, that should be all the clues that we've got. So let's go speak to Jame... Uh, this, uh... No, that's not Jameson. That idiot over there is Jameson. This is Nelson. Detective Phelps and Galloway. Homicide. Can you tell me exactly what happened? We were shunting cars over to the main line when I saw this man here lying on top of this woman. The woman wasn't moving and seemed to be in a bad way. What time was this? About 7.30 this morning, sir. Thanks for your help. Have you given Patrolman Hart your details? I have, sir. Thank you. You can go now. Right. Jameson, you're in a lot of, lot of trouble here. Start talking. Detective Phelps, LAPD homicide. John Ferdinand Jameson. We need you to answer some questions, John. If you don't mind, I prefer Ferdinand. Don't push your luck, knucklehead. What were you doing to the body, Ferdinand? Are you sure you won't be upset? Try me, Ferdinand. I was kissing her. It's not against the law. Shut up. There's no Take law your against beating it. like a man. Turn out your pockets, Ferdinand.
Oh boy. Classic Carmine. Is this yours, Ferdinand? No. I found it near her purse. I thought she could use some lipstick. Rusty, stop! Don't hit him. So, your interference with evidence. You uh, went through her purse? It wasn't like she needed it. I took a look. Oh, come on. You found her lipstick. What did you write on her body? What are you talking about? I didn't write anything. Okay, I can tell this case is not gonna go well. You found the body? Yes, I did. I work here. I was coming off shift and headed home. Okay, now I know you're hiding something. Why didn't you report the body, Jameson? Do you know how this is gonna look to a jury? A jury? What gives? I, I can tell that she was dead. I came through here about midnight last night. She wasn't here then. Let me belt him again. You're under arrest, Jameson. We'll see how this plays out. Until then, you can think a little on how you'd like to be treated if you were found dead. I'm telling you, it's not illegal. Me and some friends of mine... Clyde, can you get this sack of shit into a cell? I'll deal with him later. Sure, Rusty. Well, hell. We've got a guy that likes touching dead bodies, so he might be a suspect, but yeah, I doubt he's, you know, a mastermind. Cole Phelps, badge 1247. How could I help, detective? I need an address on Levine's Liquor, closest store to the Santa Fe Avenue rail yard, if possible. Just a moment, detective. Closest store would be the one at 939 South Hope Street. Thanks for your help. So, we've got a location on Levine's Liquor Store, so we better get over there nice and fast. So we'll go to Levine's Liquor first, because that's where she calls home. Mac, you're gonna kill us! Oh, shut up, I won't kill anybody. Read that those goddamn Chinese want to sell the relief food that we're sending them? Yeah. yeah right. Those people are starving. They can't do that. They want to sell the food to fund the civil war against the communists. Really? Slow and steady, come on! Really? I guess that's okay then. Armies can't fight without food. Spend all your money on weapons, but you still have to have the will to fight. Fortunately, the Reds will win in China. Watch your mouth. You know what you're saying? The people of this country overthrew a king. You think the Chinese will balk at an emperor if they are starving? I have a feeling this case is not going to go well because I can't remember half of the answers out of this one. So we may have to be prepared to have the captain, you know throw a literal book at us because I doubt I'm gonna get some of these questions right what can I do for you LAPD Phelps and Galloway we're making inquiries into the murder of Evelyn Summers. Evelyn? She's dead? You knew Evelyn Summers, Mr. Robbins? Yes, I knew Evelyn. I was a good friend of her ex-husband. She kept some of her stuff here. Can you show us, please? Sure. Come this way. Got some fine stock here, Mr. Robbins. You know, you let us take some for the road, this case might get solved a lot quicker. He's joking, Mr. Robbins. I sincerely hope he is. She kept a bed here, but I probably shouldn't have let her. An alcoholic in a liquor store, that was never gonna work out, was it? We'll take a look around. Okay, what have we got? 
I'm guessing Evelyn hadn't held down a job for quite some time before she was killed. Yep, we're getting that initial feeling. When exactly did Evelyn work in the pictures? A few years ago. She worked in legal copyrights for music. Oh, well. Well then. Legal copyright for music, did she? Okay, nothing there. We got anything usable? Evelyn was reading Aristotle? Evelyn wasn't stupid. The only stupid thing about her was her need to drink. And she was borrowing books from Grosvenor McCaffrey. Okay. Apparently there's still stuff I need to investigate, but... Where is it? Rawlings Bowling Alley. Maybe Evelyn did something other than drink in her spare time. Rawlings. I know that place. Corner of 9th and Grand. A lot of cops bowl there on Tuesday nights. Is one of them you, Rusty? Is there something you would like to tell me? So, your relationship with the victim. Were you and Evelyn close, Mr. Robbins? Not many people will be sad she's gone. I'll be one of the few. Okay, I'm gonna go with truth here. We got the impression that Evelyn had been sleeping rough of late. It became difficult for me to have her staying here. Her mother was trying to get her back on the straight and narrow. She's old now. To be honest, you have to have a good reason to want to get back on. And what was your contact with her? We're trying to account for Evelyn's movements yesterday. She came by in the morning. A social visit? To pick up some of her things? She had a couple of bucks and bought a quart of rye. Any idea where the money came from? She didn't mention it. But she did say the booze was a present for a boy. She said they had been fighting and she had to make it up to him. Okay, liquor purchase and knowledge of McCaffrey. Do you know a friend of Evelyn's by the name of McCaffrey? Not personally. Mm, I don't know about this one. We're struggling for leads, Robbins. Did she know McCaffrey? She idolized him. From what I gather, the feeling was far from mutual. He seems to peddle a revolutionary stance, fixing the ills of society. You could see how it would appeal to down and outs like Evelyn. Thanks for your help, Mr. Robbins. No problem. Hey, I'd like to make arrangements for the funeral. Do you think I could get in touch with Evelyn's mother? Put in a call to the watch commander at Central Station, Mr. Robbins. He'll be trying to reach the next of kin. Thanks. Get the guy, huh? Evelyn never hurt anybody. Will do. So, with that all done now, we can now head out to Mench's bar and see if we can locate this McCaffrey fella. Fellas. Phelps, Galloway, homicide. We need to ask you some questions concerning Evelyn Summers. I'm Walter Mensch. Evelyn Summers? What is it now? You knew Evelyn? As well as I wanted to know Evelyn. She's a pain in the ass, always coming in here, cadging drinks, never had any money. She was in just a couple of nights ago. Did she ever tell you where she was staying? I don't know. I think she was living rough. She had that kind of stunk about her. Who did she drink with? A bunch of these guys. Ask around. Okay. That guy seems to be looking at me, so we'll leave him till last. How about we start with you? You a friend of Evelyn Summers? Who's asking? Very cute. You know who's asking. I know my rights. You don't have any. Answer the question. Evelyn mooches for drinks. I don't have any time for that. Was that so hard? Keep writing me, copper. I'll just let Rusty hit you, buddy. You don't have any rights. 
Now, how about you? You that keeps looking What's at me. What's your name? Grosvenor McCaffrey. Mind if I ask you some questions, Mr. McCaffrey? I'm just a starving writer, detective. What do you want to ask about? Evelyn Summers and why she was found beaten and strangled in the rail depot on Santa Fe. Okay. I see your point. How well did you know her? I can't say that I knew her. It was more like I was aware of her. Oh, this is gonna go well. Do you have a criminal record, Mr. McCaffrey? Nothing serious. I've had a few skirmishes. Do you want me to look up your file? Do you want to save me some time, or do you want me to look up your file? Industrial disputes. Strikes. Workers' rights. That kind of thing. A regular fifth columnist. Nice to meet you, comrade. Rusty, you're not helping. You say you barely knew Evelyn? Yes, that is correct. Okay, now I know that's a lie. You're lying, McCaffrey. You look down your nose at Evelyn, but you knew her, and you have some idea of what happened. I hope you're holding aces. I'm telling you again, I barely knew the woman. Well, if you barely knew her, buddy, then why did she have a book with your name in it? Why would you lend her your book on metaphysics if you only knew her in passing? It was more than that. A renaissance man like yourself lending his books to his acolytes. She hounded me about that goddamn book. And then she lifts it from my apartment and lies to my face that she didn't take it. As if she could even comprehend any of it. I saw her go into a hotel with Tiernan last night. They had booze in a paper bag. He's your man. Thank you for the information, Mr. McCaffrey. So, we've got an ID on someone called Tiernan. So, I guess we better head to the bowling alley. Eleven King. A message from Captain Donnelly. Return to Central. Go to. Eleven King. Enter out. Oh, okay. Let's not keep the man waiting. You know. Why are we returning to Central? Is this something else about the Dahlia Killer? Right, what do we got? The captain is downstairs with Ray Pinker and Carruthers. Okay then, why is Carruthers in on this? Rusty, out of the way. We better get down here and see what's going on, but I think this has something to do with the Dahlia Killer. Son of a bitch. What's this about, Captain? Ray and Mal have some concerns over the Henry and Muller cases, which I don't want aired outside of this room. The evidence is solid, Captain. I agree, Rusty. It's just that corpses keep piling up. Copycats. I've been banging the same drum. But the notes and the lipstick messages. Evelyn Summers, Cartel Classic Carmine. Each woman, same brand, same color. Teresa Terrelson didn't have a lipstick message. Technically, you're right, Rusty. She didn't have any lipstick. But she did have a message. We found it beneath her dress, scraped with a sharp stick. What did it say? You sure you want to know, Ray? As far as we can be sure, it said cunt BD. That's one way of looking at it. Looking at what? Cunt is all about access, Phelps. You're married, so yours is mortgaged. Some of us like to pay by installments. This guy doesn't like to pay at all. Why are you so angry, Mal? Because I just had to fire one of my assistants. He was a friend of Jameson's. God knows what he might have been up to. Captain, we have good leads in the Summers case. But it's up to you to decide how we proceed. Keep this under your hat for now. And to follow up on Evelyn Summers. I want daily reports. We got our orders. Back to the Summers case. Get an address for McCaffrey. He'll have blown the bar. I'll meet you outside.
Right, so that was unexpected. So we still have to go to the bowling alley, and now we need to find an address on McCaffrey. Operator, give me R&I. Putting you through now. Phelps, badge 1247. How can I help, detective? I need an address for a Grosvenor McCaffrey. Grosvenor McCaffrey. Apartment 6, 126 Yale Street, between Ord and Alpine. Thanks, ma'am. Alright, so we got an address on McCaffrey. But, first up, I want to go over to that bowling alley, because we had that before we had McCaffrey's apartment. So, I want to go do this first. Let me pose a question. Pens, what's that to do with? Morals. Would it bother you to put the wrong person away? Depends. On what? On whether anyone except the poor son of a bitch in the slam ever found out. Hello, Rusty. Two on your usual lane? I'm Detective Phelps. Homicide. You must be new. <laughs> What's your shoe size? We're conducting an investigation, ma'am. Do you know the name Evelyn Summers? Sounds like I should. Oh, maybe it could be Jimmy's friend. Jimmy? James Tiernan. He's a pin setter. One day, he introduced me to a lady after work. It stuck in my mind because she was much older, too old for him. Where can we find Jimmy Florence? He'll be hopping around the lanes toward the back. Thanks, ma'am. Let's go get him. Actually, actually, he's right there. Oh, you, stop! Can you run any faster, Phelps? Tiernan! LAPD! There! What are you waiting for? Get after him! We might go faster if we weren't carrying the extra weight. Yeah, get out, These Rusty. There's flashy cars to be parked outside a bowling alley. The lanes attract a fast-living individual with money to burn. Or a middle-aged individual with the need to feel virile. I'll try to shoot out his tires. Wish me luck. I hope you have better luck than last time. Hit him, Cole. Spin him out. Don't go to sleep on me. Get me back in close. Another runner. Well, at least we've got a suspect. Why do they always run? I'm sure we've got the wrong person in more than one of these homicides, but they always seem to lamb it. You know, your theories are not airtight by any means, folks. Hit it! Clean this asshole off the road. If this isn't the killer, we can at least get him for reckless endangerment. That's unless he runs into a wall and saves us all the trouble. Come on, Rusty. Hit him. Oh my god. Whoa, looks like we're going into the tunnels. God damn it, he'll kill himself. Alright, as long as he doesn't kill us, I'm okay with it. Um Call me a red bash, but I think we should look in on that fellow traveler from the bar. That McCaffrey guy. I think we may have stopped the tram. Show me your hands! Right, now that that's out of the way, we've got one, now we need to go and get the other one. We need to go get McCaffrey. Mm -hmm. 
All right, McCaffrey. Apartment McCaffrey's six. McCaffrey's in apartment six. Let's hope he doesn't do a runner on us, or I'm tempted to let Rusty shoot him. So, just look for the door that has the handle. So, yep, rooms five and six. Doesn't look like anybody's home. Okay. What have we got here? Actually, what is this? This looks like the second half of the note. One from the letter we found beside the body. At the very least, I'd say it ties McCaffrey to the scene. Okay then. And we've also got this. This is not looking good for him. He said he was at home. He said he didn't know her. And we have the book. Let's see Carruthers argue his way out of this one. Is that you, Grosvenor? Who are you guys? What are you doing in here? We're from the LAPD, ma'am. Do you know where we might find McCaffrey? I'm his neighbor. Is he in trouble? Look, lady, we need to find him, and in a hurry. Are you going to give me trouble? He has a pigeon coop up on the roof. He spends his mornings up there when he's been drinking. How do we get up there? Down the hall and up the stairs. Drunk and in command of a carrier pigeon. Hmm. Surely we can ride him up for that. A citation, at least. Grosvenor McCaffrey! Running on a hangover, McCaffrey? Sit you down and we'll talk! I'll go get our wheels. Of course he's going to run. Why wouldn't he run? Runner McCaffrey, stay and fight the good fight. Can I, like, shoot this guy or do I have to tackle him to the ground? I think I have to tackle him. But everyone is just that tiny little bit faster than Phelps. Get that bomb. Be careful. You look dangerous. Give it up, LAPD. Get back here, Grosvenor. You're not making anything better by running. Oh, I'm on your ass now. I'm on your ass now. Why am I so slow? Don't make me chase you! McCaffrey, you're under arrest on suspicion of murdering Evelyn Summers. You need to get downtown and wrap this thing up. It's gotta be McCaffrey. Unless Terranen set him up. You don't think that asshole Jameson could have done it, do you? Eh, whoever did it, at least it wasn't that Dahlia fuck. Buddy! How do you know that McCaffrey didn't do the Dahlia? We have a list of over 200 suspects. His name was never on it. If you think the list is exhaustive, Rusty, who am I to argue? Listen, let's just work the case at hand, shall we? Then we can sit down and put all the puzzle pieces together at a later date. I'll hold you to that. I can't believe that guy actually hit my car. I should write him up for speeding. Sure, you can make it stick with one of these suspects, gentlemen. It's either McCaffrey or Tiernan, sir. I think Jameson is an aberration. All right. I'll deal with that degraded lunatic myself. He's got some fearful retribution coming. Tiernan isn't one, McCaffrey isn't two. I want the confession from one of them. Don't fail me, young Phelps. Okay, I think we need to go see Tiernan first. Why did you run, Tiernan? I was the last one to see Evelyn that night. I knew you would think it was me. Okay, fair enough. So, what's your relationship with her? 
Can you describe your relationship with Evelyn? I, I barely knew Evelyn. Keep lying to me and I'll have you charged and in front of a grand jury before your feet touch the ground. <laughs> How can you possibly prove Evelyn and I were more than friends? Yes, how indeed. I think I do actually have something which shows it. This. How come this is so hard to believe? A man and a woman getting along, liking each other, just as friends. Yeah, this is not going to go well. Aristotle's Metaphysics. The book that belonged to McCaffrey. McCaffrey saw her looking at her once and laughed in her face. And you're saying Evelyn stole it. She wanted something of his. Oh, I have no absolute clue. It looks like he's telling the truth, but at the same time, he could be lying. You know what? Can I use an intuition point? Yeah, I'm going to remove an answer. So it's either good or bad cop. That does not help me. You don't like McCaffrey, do you, Ternan? He's full of the common man routine, but he props up a bar like the rest of us. Evelyn thought he was going to be a great novelist. <laughs> and he had nothing but vitriol for her. This is going horrible. You and Evelyn were drinking together last night, and she had no other place to stay. I don't know what happened last night. I, I don't remember. Oh, crap. I should have spoken to McCaffrey. I should have spoken to McCaffrey because he would have given me, uh... Oh, no, wait. Actually, can I tell a lie? I'm gonna try. You're lying, Tiernan. You'd been fighting with her. You fought and... I'm not lying! She got up and left! That was it! And... Oh, I can't. I don't have the evidence to... To do it, that is the right answer, but I haven't got the evidence. Okay, that is actually quite stupid. That was probably the answer to the first one. The second one was bad cop, and now I don't have the evidence for the third question. You're off the hook, for now. So, this one's gonna be wrong by default. If you don't give me some reason to think differently about this, Tiernan, I'm gonna have to go to the DA. I drank half a bottle of scotch. I don't remember a goddamn thing. Why do I get the feeling he's gonna charge Tiernan if I get this fourth question wrong? Do you own a car, Tiernan? No, I don't. Hmm. Have access to a lug wrench? No, we use a lot of them to clear jams in the pin setting machines. Oh, god damn it! I don't know anymore. Let's use another intuition point. Oh, ask the community. Good cop, bad cop, and accuse. Let's go with bad cop, then. The coroner's report says that Evelyn was killed with a wrench. I think you did it and then planted the evidence at McCaffrey's apartment for us to find. We went to his apartment. McCaffrey was up on the roof. Evelyn stole the book. <laughs> McCaffrey went crazy when he found out. He said, he said he would put her out of her misery. He can be very cruel. Okay. Evelyn was missing a ring from her right hand. That's strange. She always wore it. A uh, big black circular disc with a white E in the middle. It was, it was made from an old typewriter key, a present from the prop department at her old movie studio. We're going to talk to McCaffrey. You need to think about what you've told us, Tiernan. You're not in the clear. The only good thing that came out of that is I've got some evidence to use against McCaffrey. But that was absolutely horrible. Let's hope this one goes better. You ready to answer some questions? You think I have all the answers? People who run from the police usually have something to hide. Touché, detective. Let's see where this takes us. It's not going to be in a good place, I can, I can guarantee you that. Evelyn died sometime around midnight. Remind me, where were you? I was at home, writing. I'm working on a manuscript. So that's his alibi. If I got anything to say that he wasn't there. 
No, that's only threats of violence. Oh, I don't have the other piece of evidence from Tin, and he gives me something to use against him. I have no clue. You're gonna need to do better if you don't want to swing for this. I was having a political meeting in my apartment. Cheese and crackers for the fifth columnist. Some of these people will corroborate your story. I won't give up names of party members. Good. It's your funeral. Access to Ty Ryan? We found the lug wrench that Evelyn was battered with in your apartment, and the note from her mother, and your bloodstained clothing. We have you cold, McCaffrey. You think if I could be bothered to murder Evelyn Summers, I would be stupid enough to leave the evidence in my apartment? I'm going to accuse him on this one. I don't believe you, Grosvenor. The evidence says that you killed her. You can prove that I wanted to kill Evelyn? Actually, yes I can. Tiernan gave me this lovely piece of evidence. Tiernan is prepared to testify that you threatened Evelyn's life in his presence. Self-preservation. That's understandable. Okay, I'll level with you. Tiernan killed Evelyn. He came to me for help. I listened to him, and he explained why he did it. Tiernan went to you for help. You expect me to buy that? That's how it went down. I told him he made a terrible mistake, but he would be throwing his life away if he went to the cops. I took his things and told him I would dispose of them. But you didn't. Speak to Tiernan. He'll give it up. Okay, I guess it's back to Tiernan then. And just before we do that, we've got to make a phone call. Operator, give me dispatch. Putting you through now. Cole Phelps, badge 1247. I need the jacket on a Grosvenor McCaffrey. Just a moment, detective. McCaffrey was formerly under surveillance by the Red Squad. Convictions for petty theft. Dishonorable discharge from the army during training at Syracuse. Assault on a local woman. Says he almost beat the woman to death. Thanks. Okay, so we've got his criminal record, but we need to go speak to Tiernan first. You spoken to McCaffrey? I can go, it's all been cleared up. Not quite. We have one more question we need to ask, James. Then I think we will be done. Sure. Go ahead. The events prior to murder. So Evelyn passed out, and you walked out. What happened next? I woke up in the morning. Mary hung over. I thought Evelyn would have come back. I know you're lying, James. You went out looking for her. Tell me what really happened. I don't know what you're talking about. How, how can you say I wasn't in that hotel room? Because McCaffrey just gave me a piece of evidence against you. You wound up at McCaffrey's. You were still incredibly drunk. You passed out on his floor. It's time to tell me what really happened. McCaffrey woke me up the next morning and he showed me the lug wrench and the letter and the box and he said I came in with him last night. He said that I killed Evelyn and that it was all over the radio and that he would protect me. And I don't know, Detective, for the life of me, I can't remember a goddamn thing. And I was angry with her. Really angry. I could have done it. It wasn't me. Wait here. We need to go speak to McCaffrey about his criminal past. I'm thinking of moving on. Which he previously lied to me about. You were in the war? Yes, I was. Seeing the things that I saw. 
It changes a man. I came back here determined to change things. All I wanted was a pen and an opportunity to speak out. You told us before that you had only minor run-ins with the police. You didn't mention petty theft. I've never been in trouble for violence. That's the salient point here, isn't it? Well, that's a lie. You're lying, McCaffrey. You have a history of violence towards women. How do you turn a couple parking tickets in a petty theft misdemeanor into an assault charge? Because I looked up your criminal record, which I warned you I was going to do. We know all about you and your dishonorable discharge, beating some poor woman near to death in Syracuse. You've never been in combat, McCaffrey. Your whole life is a fraud. She was a goddamn peasant whore! She tried to steal from my wallet. I could have fought for this country. I could have... You beat her because she stole from you. Because she tried to outsmart you. The ignorant audacity of the bitch. What is a man supposed to do? Sit there and take it? How is a man supposed to call himself a man? And Evelyn Summers, a poor, drunken nobody, stole your book. And she got what was coming to her. Okay, that's enough. Grosvenor McCaffrey, I'm charging you with the murder of Evelyn Summers. She was a sad lady who never hurt anyone except herself. I hope God finds a way to forgive you. Congratulations, boys. You bagged the fine catch. Another red to boot. Grand. Now, I want you to put this business about a repeat offender out of your mind. This McCaffrey creature shows no remorse. And neither will the grand jury. You would have to walk a long mile to find a better candidate for an unmarked plot at the prison graveyard. Okay, that didn't go as bad as what I was expecting it to. Grosvenor McCaffrey can write a tell-all memoir from his cell on death row. And that is where I'm leaving this video for today. Next time we are going to finish off Homicide by doing the last case. So drop a like, leave a comment, and I will see you all in the next video.